how to make a simple amplifier. I had the exact same question about 15 years ago when I was just getting started with electronics. That's when I found this little chip, the TDA7052A. In this video, I will show you how I made my first amplifier using this chip. It is very simple to put together and I think it's the best amplifier for absolute beginners. But first, let's go through some theory. Ok, what is an amplifier and why do you need one? In very simple terms, an amplifier takes a small signal and generates a larger, more powerful copy of that signal with the help of an external power source. A signal, for example, can be the audio output of my laptop, which is limited to about 0.6 volts peak to peak. That is enough for playing music on a pair of simple headphones, but if I want to drive bigger speakers, I need a more powerful signal, I need an amplifier. Back in the old days, amplifiers relied on big and inefficient vacuum tubes to amplify signals. These were eventually replaced by transistors, which allowed amps to be made smaller and more efficient. Today, the majority of inexpensive amplifiers are made using integrated circuits, also called chips. ICs contain the majority of an amplifier circuit, allowing us to design cheap and reliable amplifiers that are not the size of a suitcase. The TDA7052A is one such integrated circuit audio amplifier. It is nowhere near the best you can buy, but it is perfect for beginners for many reasons. First of all, it runs on just 6 volts, which makes it very safe to work with. Also, it needs only a few external parts to work, and since it doesn't get too hot, you don't have to deal with a heatsink. Now, I know that for the money that you'll spend on parts, you can get a better pre-made amplifier, like this PAM8403 board. But if you want to make something yourself for the fun of it, the TDA7052A is a great choice. So, how do we make an amp with the TDA7052A? First, let's look at the datasheet for the chip. It has all the information that we need, including a wiring diagram. Pin 2 is where we connect the input signal. Pin 4 is used for volume control. Pins 3 and 6 are connected to ground. Pins 5 and 8 go to your speaker. And to pin 1 you connect your power supply. I will be using a 6 volt battery pack. Ok, now you may be wondering which pin is which. If you look at the chip, you will see a small notch on one of the sides. The pin to the left of it is pin 1. Then you go counterclockwise. We have pins 2, 3 and 4. And on the other side, pins 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now let's wire up this amplifier on a breadboard. By the way, if you don't know how to use one of these, I have a breadboard tutorial for beginners, you can check it out. So, here I have the chip in the middle of the breadboard, where chips are supposed to go. I will start by placing this electrolytic capacitor close to the chip. Remember that these capacitors are polarized, so you need to connect the negative side to ground and the positive side to the positive rail of the circuit. In our case, the positive leg of the cap gets connected to pin 1 and the negative one gets connected to pin 6. I will now connect pin 6 to the negative rail of the breadboard and pin 1 to the positive one. Between pins 4 and ground, I will connect a 100 kilo ohm resistor. Pin 4 is used to control the volume level. The higher the resistor value, the louder the sound will be. If you skip this resistor, the chip will play at its maximum level, but it will not sound great. Pin 3 gets connected to ground. To pin 2, which is the signal input pin, I will connect a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. The other leg of the capacitor goes to an empty row of the breadboard. Next, I connect a 4.7K resistor from that row to ground. This is a 3.5mm headphone jack connector with wires soldered to it. I'm gonna use it to get the signal from my laptop to the amp. The wire for one of the sound channels goes to pin 2, 
between the input capacitor and the 4.7K resistor. And the signal ground wire goes as close to pin 3 as possible. If you want to mix the two stereo signals together, you can do so by using two 1K resistors like this. I will now connect a pair of wires to pins 5 and 8 for the sound output. The other two ends of the wires get connected to a speaker. By the way, this chip is meant to work with 8 ohm speakers. Check the back of your speaker and make sure that its impedance is not lower than 8 ohms. Otherwise, you may damage the chip. Next, I will plug the audio input cable into the jack. The other end of the cable is connected to my laptop. Finally, I will connect the 6 volt battery pack to the circuit. You may hear the speaker go pop for a moment, and that's normal. Alright, it looks like our amplifier works like expected. Now, this is the simplest version of an amp you can make with the TDA7052A. If you want to go a step further, you can add volume control by replacing the 100K resistor from pin 4 with a potentiometer. The datasheet recommends a 1 megaohm potentiometer, but with a phone or a laptop as your sound source, a 100K will work better. And if you want to make a stereo amplifier, you simply get a second chip and make the same circuit a second time. In that case, you should use a stereo potentiometer for volume control. You may also use just a single 470 microfarad capacitor at the power supply. Each of the stereo sound signals goes to its own chip. By the way, you may have noticed that this chip can only provide about 1 watt of power and even less than that without noticeable distortion. I know the numbers do not sound like a lot, but trust me, for comfortable listening at home, even less than a watt can be enough. Okay, thanks for watching, and I hope that you learned something new today. As always, you can leave your questions and comments below, and subscribe to my channel to never miss any of my future videos.